Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Wendy K. Laidlaw here from Heal Endometriosis Naturally. I hope that this podcast finds you well. Now, last week I brought up the very sensitive subject of domestic abuse, and I want to explain a little bit more about what abuse is and how it may show up as something other than physical abuse, which is kind of the, the common uh, perception of it, and just really help educate you and inform you a little bit more if this is something that perhaps you're not aware of. So this is domestic abuse part two. As I discussed in my last podcast, the sensitive subject of domestic abuse or emotional mistreatment and how few people are aware of its existence in our society in the Western world. I believe this is the case because the word abuse may feel such a loaded term on its own and may evoke a feeling of resistance and distance for many and something that we just don't want to talk about. As I've mentioned before, abuse isn't just physical. There are many other types of abuse other than the ones I listed last week. Many types of non-physical abuse encompass the degradation of a woman's sense of self, designed to be a slow but subtle corrosive level over long periods of time. Government agencies, police forces and charities around the world agree that abusers or toxic people may carry out more than one form of emotional mistreatment against their poor unsuspecting targets. Toxic people may use a combination of multiple types of mistreatment and it is this sustained passive-aggressive approach that causes many women such confusion and deep long-term suffering. Emotional mistreatment has such a profound impact on the body's nervous system which is in constant communication with the immune system thereby impacting the physical health and emotional health as the body's nervous system is unable to relax and is put in a continuous state of fight-flight, maladaptive stress response. What this means is that the stress hormone cortisol and adrenaline are being pumped out, affecting other hormones like the production of progestion and increasing estrogen. But more on that another time. Not only is this type of subversive treatment damaging at deep levels of the psyche, but it is not often immediately apparent because it becomes so challenging to escape from. As with all forms of mistreatment and abuse, the abuser is often very skilled at his or her trade or their way of undermining. At the beginning of a new relationship, or indeed interchangeably throughout, the toxic person may appear to be very attentive, kind and charming. This charming part of them may appear intermittently in between the abuse, which only then goes to add to the confusion. A reprieve from the mistreatment and suffering is naturally welcomed, but it is often a fleeting, temporary state before the behaviour reverts back to one of being very confusing. When the toxic person is charming, the target then welcomes this desirable behaviour, which encourages her to open up more emotionally, lower her guard and innocently share more of herself. However, the toxic person may end up using this new openness against her, when the small window of reprieve has passed. What is clear and part of the pattern of destructive behaviour is how they go through some very distinct treatment phases, referred to as idealise, <clears throat> degrade and discard. Each time the toxic person enters into a new relationship, they adopt these patterns to test just how much they can get away with and how much the new woman, their target, will accept. In future posts, I'll explain 
what steps you can take to protect yourself and learn how to put appropriate boundaries in place, certainly to ensure that an abuser and or toxic person learns very early on to leave you alone. Sadly, emotional mistreatment is a silent epidemic of gigantic proportions. It's like its own chronic disease that is fragmenting and eroding any form of safety and integrity in relationships. Many educational systems around the globe fail to encourage the learning of self-worth, setting of appropriate personal boundaries, assertiveness and psychological protection for those girls and women who have been brought up to be good girls, in inverted commas, and encouraged to sit quietly and be submissive. Teaching women how to increase their awareness and personal boundaries from toxic people that take advantage of their good nature is one of the many elements that are at the core of what I do to help women with endometriosis, to support themselves, empower themselves, and of course, heal themselves by putting their endometriosis into remission. Assertiveness, not aggression, and personal empowerment are required to be taught and encouraged for the more sensitive personality types. What I call e-hisps, exquisitely, highly intuitive, sensitive people, so that the toxic types do not use and abuse their good nature and use it against them. It is essential for, for all round emotional, physical health and balanced, healthy relationships that more is taught as a deterrent to abusers and help women who have been worn down to realise and step into their own protective power. What makes a societal issue a challenge to address cohesively is that much of the abuse and emotional mistreatment happens behind closed doors in women's own home. Social media and magazines encourage the portrayal of this perfect image of home life and relationships. Yet life and relationships are not the fairy tales we grew up believing and very often the reality is hard to acknowledge. Over the centuries, with the splitting up of our tribes and communities, many families have learned to endure abhorrent amounts of emotional mistreatment and abuse privately and struggle to escape once they realise what has been going on under their own nose. I believe that the secret to life is balance and that the secret to balance is awareness and the secret to awareness is to journal and meditate. It was by following this particular process of journaling and increasing my own awareness over many years that led me to recognise what had been happening in some of my own relationships under my nose. I slowly realised how toxic the relationships around me had become and led in one close relationship to being referred to as domestic abuse and emotional mistreatment by the authorities that I got in to help me. This is why this podcast series about increasing awareness of this underhand form of mistreatment is close to my heart and why I share this information and education with you now. Personally, I struggled to understand what was going on. I made excuses and justifications for the toxic people's behaviour. It took me decades to put a name to this foul behaviour and comprehend that anyone would intentionally set out to harm me when they said they loved you. I wish that all women with endometriosis and adenomyosis who may be struggling to identify why they are unable to heal fully start the journey to increase their awareness as to who might be around them that is keeping their nervous system unsettled and an immune system unable to function effectively thereby silently keeping them unwell. <clears throat> I discuss in my online Endometriosis Academy program how I believe that endometriosis and adenomyosis are such complex conditions to treat because it is a combination of factors that I refer to as the five Ps or the five poisons, i.e. produce, products, property, past and people that deeply affects the health of a woman with endometriosis and adenomyosis. I was lucky to be able to escape, and that is another story in more detail for another time, but many women and children are not. So if you feel you may be one of them and silently suffering behind closed doors, firstly know you are not to blame, it is not your fault, and that you are not alone, and over the next few weeks and months I'll share with you how to start to protect yourself. 
Last week I briefly dis touched on the various types of domestic abuse and emotional mistreatment that is conducted behind closed doors. Some of these types of abhorrent behaviours have been used for generations to exert control and power over women and children. I mentioned that there are nine main types of emotional abuse and domestic abuse and they are classed as follows. Physical, sexual, verbal, psychological, emotional, coercive control, financial, religious and digital. So let's start with what is physical abuse. Physical abuse may be very apparent to many, but sadly, the most well-known and acknowledged form of domestic abuse is easier to identify and thereby extremely unacceptable in society. Physical abuse may be defined as any violence or intentional and unwanted contact with a target's body. Apart from the obvious physical harm this causes, and in some cases lifelong damage or even death, the threat of more physical abuse makes targets live in a constant state of fight-flight stress response. In England and Wales, the Office of National Statistics states that two women die every week at their hands of their partner or a former partner. And that, and we don't see what isn't reported. The fear of retaliation may cause women to become too scared to speak, to seek help or run away. Equally, the women may succumb to the abuser's false apologies and promises as I mentioned above, and the woman's hope is that the abuser will change. This change, of course, never occurs, and invariably the physical abuse intensifies and becomes more dangerous the longer the woman stays in the relationship. Examples of physical abuse include pushing, grabbing, slapping, punching, strangling, pulling of hair or clothes, there is zero excuse for any form of abuse. <clears throat> what is sexual abuse? Sexual abuse, again, is another more well-known type of abuse as, like physical abuse, it is extremely unacceptable in society. However, as with many other types of abuse, it is hard to prove as some actions may be coercive. Sexual abuse may be defined as a situation where the abuser forces or pressurises a woman to do something sexual that she does not want to do, even in a close relationship. It can be damaging to the woman as it may lead to psychological trauma and flashbacks, referred to as PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, especially if they are forced to do unwanted sexual acts or forced interaction. But sexual abuse can be incredibly degrading and lead to deep insecurities for a woman. It can also lead to unwanted pregnancy and have physical effects if violence is used by the abuser to get their own way. Examples of this type of abuse include unwanted approach, touching, kissing, rough sexual activity, being sexually inappropriate in public, refusing to use or stopping you from using contraceptives or protection, putting hands around your throat, using sexual insults or making you feel guilty for not consenting to certain sexual activities. Although interestingly, whilst all forms of sexual abuse are abhorrent, the opposite situation may also be used in marriages or relationships by some abusive partners. Some toxic people have been known to withhold any and all forms of physical closeness and sexual relations almost as a form of punishment to the woman. So if you are confused why your partner is not interested in any physical closeness or relations with you, then this may be a sign of him trying to control you and manipulate you. There is zero excuse for any form of abuse. So what is verbal abuse? Verbal abuse is often less understood and harder to identify. Verbal abuse may be solely used as a form of control However, studies indicate that this form of abuse is used by many abusers, even those who aren't physical. Verbal abuse can be defined as the act of an abuser repeatedly using undermining, cruel and hurtful words and tones to demean, frighten or control someone. This form of abuse can be damaging to a woman's sense of self and although the woman is not being physically harmed, the intent from the words and tone may be enough to scare her from seeking help 
or being able to explain what is happening and how she is feeling. When a woman's partner, who is supposed to make her feel safe and love her, verbally abuses her, she's left feeling confused and frightened, anxious and fearful. Again, which puts her body into this constant state of fight, flight, freeze, fold, which was some create a form of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, where they are not able to relax or feel safe in their own home. Also, verbal abuse is harder to prove to outsiders, so this makes it even more damaging, and the woman may doubt her sense of reality if the abuse distorts it and tries to minimise what is happening. Examples of verbal abuse include screaming abusive and aggressive comments, words or phrases, saying derogatory remarks, incessant or unwanted teasing, saying things like you are too sensitive, or undermining backhanded insults. There is zero excuse for any form of abuse. What is psychological abuse? Well, psychological abuse can be defined as a person subjecting another person to behaviour which may result in psychological trauma, including anxiety, fear, chronic depression, and again, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. The behaviours carried out in psychological abuse are very damaging because of their coercive, underhand manner and have some of the most devastating long-term effects for targets. Psychological abuse is so damaging because it may eventually distort the woman's sense of self and her reality. This form of mistreatment is designed to be incoherent, confusing and manipulative to her until she does not know what is real, imagined or distorted. Toxic people may belittle her and make her feel worthless. Examples include a term referred to as gaslighting, used after the film Gaslighting in the 1960s, where a man manipulated the the lighting in this woman's home to make her feel that she was losing her mind. Or cognitive dissonance, the act of manipulating a person into doubting their own sanity or reality. Gaslighting involves such acts such as hiding or moving objects or items around the home or taking them out the home and returning them later. And then they deny their involvement, even if it was clear it was them. And this behaviour makes a woman naturally question her sanity and memory. Toxic people distort the truth regularly and may also make a woman believe that people have said things about them, unpleasant things, that friends don't like her or that she has a mental health condition when she doesn't. Other behaviours include making derogatory jokes about her to others in front of her, engaging in cruel name-calling, telling her that she is useless and stupid, worthless or crazy or questioning her endlessly about everything she says or does. There are many other actions that could be mentioned, including that the woman engages in trying to please her partner, but they are never ever happy or content, no matter how hard she tries to please them. These are some of the main ones, and you can see how some of these abuses overlap. But what is clear, there is zero excuse for any form of abuse. What is emotional abuse? Emotional abuse can be defined as abuse that is emotional rather than physical and involves a mixture of overt acts like criticism and covert acts like manipulation that aim to distort and play with a woman's feelings and emotions and to provoke her emotionally. A woman is then left feeling worthless as she is criticised by the toxic person for her reactions, for her every feeling, thought and belief she may experience. Acts of emotional abuse can include the silent treatment and saying there is nothing wrong, yet their demeanour says the opposite. Stopping her from seeing friends and family, with little underhanded comments and remarks making her doubt the validity of their friendships and relationships. Telling her who she can and can't speak to. Telling her what to do, directly and indirectly. Telling her what to wear. Going through her phone, messages, behind her back threatening to harm her, threatening to harm her pet or the people she cares about to stop her from breaking up with them, damaging her personal belongings or property when they are angry, putting her down or intentionally embarrassing her in public and or again giving her the silent treatment. This 
Type of abuse, like all forms, may lead to psychological trauma and a severe degradation of confidence and self-belief, resulting in feeling depressed, anxious, and sadly, in some cases, suicidal idealization. Again, there is zero excuse for any form of abuse. What is coercive control? Coercive control can be defined as a pattern of intimidation, degradation, isolation and control with the use or threat of physical or sexual violence. In essence, it is an accumulation of types, of multiple types of other forms of domestic abuse that are used by the abuser to control and restrict the woman's life. Examples of acts that fall under this particular type of abuse are unexplained and unprovoked raging, unreasonable demands placed upon her, restricting daily activities, threatening her or intimidating her, financial control, monitoring of her time, criticising her, taking her phone away and checking it, deprivation of food and or the destruction of possessions. Coercive control is damaging for women over time as they find their lives becoming less and less enjoyable as the abuser secretly and subconsciously restricts more and more of the woman's freedom and her ability to interact with her family, her friends or her colleagues outside the home. Women eventually find they're not allowed, in inverted commas, to continue her hobbies. She loses confidence and becomes isolated and trapped with the abuser who blows hot and cold with their affections and punishing silences. There is zero excuse for any form of abuse. So what is financial abuse? Well, financial abuse can be defined as a situation where one person has total control over another person's access to money and or finances. In some situations, the abuser may suggest taking over control of the finances, which at first light appears to be for ease. Yet before long, he has taken total financial control over her economic resources and diminishes the woman's ability to support herself, especially if he's encouraged her to give up work which thereby causes her to have a sole dependency on him. Financial abuse can be damaging as it forces many women to remain with their abuser even if they want to escape and is one of the main reasons women often feel trapped in abusive relationships. If coercive control, verbal, emotional and psychological abuse have also been evident in the relationship, then this confusing behaviour may have started to affect her health and her ability to work and her own ability to earn her own money. Often women find themselves giving up their work because of these conditions like endometriosis and adenomyosis and therefore their partner becomes the main breadwinner. This reliance on their partner makes the woman more susceptible to increased emotional mistreatment. Once she loses her financial independence it makes it much harder for her to regain it in the future for many reasons. She may struggle as her career has been put on hold or struggle to return to the workplace, get her own credit card or afford to buy or even rent if she wanted to escape. This also presents problems in funding a divorce, which may be too expensive due to the extortionate legal fees. Although the domestic abuse teams in the police forces throughout the UK are well trained to understand how abusers then use and continue the abuse through the court systems, It still doesn't stop the financial mistreatment from happening and there is little the police forces can do to prevent this from occurring. Examples of financial abuse are pressurising women to quit their job through repeated talk of staying at home to take care of him and cooking his meal, encouraging her to let him earn all the money, feeding into the fairy tales and folklore of knight in shining armour to take care of her refusing to pay for certain necessities she needs, such as clothing, but then buying clothes for her and insisting that she wears the clothes that he buys, saying that they have no money for something important that she needs, but then offering to spend money on a holiday, insisting that she keep a detailed record of every penny spent, keeping her from seeing or having access to any bank accounts, encouraging her to get rid of her own private bank account, put all her money into a shared account and closely watching and commenting on what she buys and limits the amount of money she can have or spend. You may have noticed 
verbal, psychological, emotional, coercive and financial abuse are all closely interlinked and connected forms of abuse and mistreatment. They are all as corrosive as each other to the woman's sense of self. Each form of mistreatment is also particularly damaging to a woman's physical health, especially when it's conducted over prolonged periods of time. And this is why I'm sharing this information. Because if you are some, being subjected to any of these forms of mistreatment emotionally, then it could be the missing ingredient as to why your health is not improving. There is zero excuse for any form of abuse. So what is religious abuse? Well, religious abuse can be defined as abuse administered under the guise or excuse of religion. Normally, this form of abuse involves acts that slowly act to degrade, coerce and control the target using specific words like universe, higher power, God, Jesus or hell as an excuse to belittle and control their target. Because it's all done in the name of religion, the abuser is able to mentally and emotionally manipulate the woman under this influence and play on her fears and worries. Although this is more evident in cults, it may be used in households, business gatherings and in certain parts of society. Examples of religious abuse could be the abuser misusing the Bible or scripture to control the actions of a woman. For example, saying, God would strike you down. God would not want you to do that or say that, and then place themselves as this divine, all-knowing, fully knowledgeable figure with unquestionable authority and use terms like, you may be struck down by God if you do X, Y or Z, if the woman does not obey him. There is zero excuse for any form of abuse. What is digital abuse? Well, digital abuse is a more modern form of abuse that has come about given the rise and increasing use of social media, mobile phones and the internet. It can be defined as the use of technology to verbally, psychologically and emotionally abuse and intimidate targets online. This form of abuse, of course, is damaging to a woman's sense of self again, as it includes emotional, psychological and verbal abuse and thus can lead to psychological trauma or PTSD and other negative effects like anxiety, especially if the woman's privacy is being violated by a partner that is supposed to respect her boundaries and she's supposed to feel safe with. Examples include the abuser stealing or insisting the woman share her passwords and login details, looking through her mobile phone and social media regularly without consent, tagging her in unkind and disturbing posts, sending hurtful or aggressive messages, using social media to keep tabs on her, posting negative things or explicit images of her online, constantly calling or texting or being demanding and expecting she respond immediately to the point she becomes scared or frightened to miss his call and indeed use her phone. So how does abuse relate to emotional upsets, depression and anxiety, for example? I will now follow on to the lesser known and darker side of domestic mistreatment that affects targets of toxic people. The feelings of depression and deep anxiety may become so ruminating in a woman's mind that in tragic cases she even ends up contemplating an escape from life, or in other words, suicidal idealisation. Suicidal idealisation may happen to a woman for a number of different reasons, but the majority of the time some women contemplate ending their life to escape this insufferable pain and confusion when everything appears too much to bear. They end up feeling they have no way out of their current situation and or no other choices available to them. Domestic abuse has a significant long-term psychological and physical impact on its targets. All forms of abuse may lead to some form of emotional distress, anxiety and as mentioned before, even PTSD. Along with social isolation and restriction from family and friends, and of course, even financial insecurity. For some women, this may be overwhelming and leads them to take their own life. On top of having physical pain from conditions like endometriosis and adenomyosis, the woman ends up feeling totally trapped, isolated and alone. When thinking about my own experience with domestic mistreatment, I would sometimes feel so worn down, flat, depressed and put down upon with little respite 
due to the continual verbal and emotional beratement. After doing more research into this connection between domestic mistreatment and suicide, I did find some evidence to suggest my initial suspicion. I discovered that domestic abuse targets have higher than average rates of suicidal thoughts. As many as 23% of targets of domestic abuse have attempted suicide, compared to only 3% from the general public who have not experienced domestic abuse. So when looking at the statistics that show how many people experience domestic abuse, one in three women and one in five children, it really highlighted the root cause of why suicide rates are so high. The research that affected me the most was the suicide figures according to the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization state that more people have died by suicide than in all the wars, terrorist attacks, murders and government executions combined. Isn't that just truly tragic? I can't help thinking how many people could still be alive if they had been made aware of a what was happening in, under their own nose and in their own home but what options and choices were available to them, shown a way out and were given an education from the educational establishments on the ill effects of domestic abuse and of course most importantly how to empower themselves to break free and step into their own power. This then led me to investigate further into how domestic abuse related to discrimination in its many forms and led to the suppression of many a soul. So how does abuse relate to discrimination? I discovered that domestic abuse may be linked to discriminatory beliefs that justify severe domestic abuse in the minds of the abuser and toxic people. For example, if a man who has grown up witnessing his father mistreat the female members of his family may also develop misogynistic, chauvinistic and sexist attitudes towards women. When children grow up with these toxic individuals in their household who project discriminatory beliefs, it may be likely those beliefs become their own for the rest of their lives as children have mirror neurons and are strongly influenced by their caregivers and parents. Then if this child, once, for example, if he's a man, enters into a relationship with a woman, his negative and caustic condition, conditioning may manifest itself in the relationship and cause him to repeat the domestic abuse pattern. Historically, it was considered important for women to stay at home to look after the children and refrain from work. It was only 50 years ago that it was commonplace for women to stop work when she married to take care of her husband and home. Those historical conditionings are still deeply embedded into parts of our society now and toxic beliefs about a woman's place being in the home have been passed down through the generations. A traditional misogynistic, chauvinistic and sexist man may coercively pressurise a woman to leave her job under the guise that he needs her to stay at home to cook and care for him when he finishes work, feeding into the old belief system. What may initially seem as a caring, considered option may lead to a full financial dependence on him, as mentioned above, which an abuser could abuse and control the woman with. Thus, we have financial abuse. Then the coercive of control and the verbal and emotional abuse take hold. Some abusers start with small, derogatory and undermining remarks about her financial dependence on him and then escalate and use this over time. This is why it is important to try and help break the ancestral conditioning and patterns of domestic abuse by sharing this important information via podcasts like this. I wish to offer options to help affected women and children escape from abusive environments by informing and educating them about their options for self-protection. If nothing is done, abuse and discrimination of one individual can lead to that target abusing and being discriminatory towards someone else. This results in a cycle of abuse and discrimination which continues decades after decade. Information and education act as a pattern interrupt to cease the domestic abuse cycle from perpetuating down another generation. If we address the root cause of abuse where it starts, which is by witnessing and mirroring the influential caregivers and or parents' behaviour at the home, then it may also help reduce suicide rates, along with sexism, racism, homophobia, misogynism and chauvinism. 
But I think the most important element that we need to talk about is how does abuse impact health? Lastly, after realising the physical effects that emotional mistreatment and abuse cause through the impact of stress upon the body, I was curious as to how domestic abuse or emotional mistreatment impacted the emotional and physical health of a woman, especially with endometriosis or adenomyosis. I wondered if a woman living under constant fear and apprehension, where she was unable to relax, rest or feel safe, how would that impact her emotionally and physically? Interestingly, I discovered many studies and papers confirming that living in a domestically abusive environment brought great stress to women, especially when a woman experienced multiple forms of emotional mistreatment over sustained periods of time. It is acknowledged wildly from a biological and physiological perspective that chronic or long-term stress impairs the body's immune system response and its ability to fight off foreign antigens. It also leads to the disturbance of many of the body's organ systems, such as the digestive system and in doctrine, hormone system. This means that women of domestic abuse or emotional mistreatment who live in constant state of anxiety, fear and worry of their partner's next rage or outburst or mistreatment may find themselves ill and fatigued as a result. But there's even more to this. Living in an abusive environment of which there is no escape or respite from can have a greater impact in the long term and lead to greater health issues, just such as more than feeling under the weather or being tired. Multiple diseases and medical conditions that are prevalent in our society today have been strongly linked to sustained high levels of chronic stress. They include heart disease, high blood pressure, insomnia, weight gain, kidney disorders, cancers, and of course, many inflammatory diseases, conditions like endometriosis and adenomyosis. If your body's in a constant state of fight, flight, freeze, fold, feeling under threat, it causes inflammation in the body and makes it harder for the immune system to do its job in helping to put endometriosis or adenomyosis into remission. So you can see why stopping domestic abuse and mistreatment is paramount not only does it have far-reaching effects into all fabric of our society, but abuse breeds abuse. Abuse breeds suffering. Suffering breeds sickness, illness and distress. Distress and depression may lead to some seeking the ultimate relief and escape of suicide. And no person, no matter who they are, their background or beliefs should experience this form of treatment. You can see how all these issues strongly interlink. There is zero excuse for any form of abuse. There are a number of behaviours that abusers do that indicate their real intentions, although it may often be difficult at first to pick up on these signs or see the red flags initially. Even if we do feel unnerved, we tend to ignore these indicators and ignore our instincts. But here are just some more examples of how toxic people behave with their emotional mistreatment and how this may show up even for you. For example, toxic people don't just get angry, they unexpectedly rage into a sudden, disproportionate, fiery fury for no reason, startling you into shock and reducing you to tears in an instant. Toxic people don't just not speak to you and ignore you, they give you punishing and profound long silence treatment that can last days where they refuse to acknowledge you and acknowledge that they are not engaging with you or even acknowledge your existence. Toxic people don't just question what you are wearing. They look it down upon you. They smirk or sneer at you. They put you down and make cruel and underhand remarks at every item of clothing you wear. Toxic people don't just say to watch expenditure. They make you feel guilty spending any money. They make you write down every penny of expenditure and account for any and every transaction, whilst limiting your access over time to your own financial resources. Toxic people don't just make you doubt yourself. They impact you to have crippling bouts of insecurity and anxiety, which make you not want to engage with friends and remain isolated and alone. Toxic people don't just cause an atmosphere. They make you feel like you're walking on eggshells or walking through a field of landmines, 
feeling like you just never know what will set them off into that rage. Toxic people aren't just unhappy or dissatisfied with life. It appears that nothing anybody or you can say or do to make them happy. Toxic people don't just leave you on edge. They make you freeze in fear when you hear the front door open, when they return home, for fear of what mood they might be in and their retribution. Toxic people don't just try to control you. They have a watchful and critical eye over you all the time and follow your every move and action whilst undermining everything that you say or do. Toxic people don't just criticise you. They tear you to pieces with any particular element of joy or pleasure that you seek. They try and tear that down as well. Toxic people don't just gaslight you. They distort your sense of reality so that nothing appears as it once was. You find yourself doubting yourself, questioning things that you were once so sure of and now feeling worn down to accepting things that you didn't like in the past but now are accepting. There is zero excuse for any form of abuse. A lot of women don't even realise that they've been or are being abused. If it's all they've known, then they think it's normal, a normal type of behaviour. And the abuser makes them think that they are the issue and that even that they deserve this mistreatment. It's sometimes so subtle, this emotional abuse and insipid that it's hard to tell if you are experiencing it at times or whether you're imagining it. Sometimes it's hard to put your finger on and many women will make endless excuses for their partner's foul behaviour over many years. One sure way to check whether you are being subjected to this is what I refer to as a tear tracker. Record and see how many times in a day or in a week that you cry and who and what makes you cry because you're not meant to suffer. That is not a life for you. It doesn't help that there are long-standing unhelpful stereotypes of what an abuser is. Many people would conjure up an image of a burly, angry-looking man that drinks himself into the ground and screams abuse and beats up his wife. But most emotional manipulators and abusers aren't like that. They seem normal and nice on the outside. Toxic people blend well into society as their social image is so important to them. They only take off their superficial mask behind closed doors. You may have noticed how perhaps a family member, a partner or a husband appears very different and charming outside with everybody else, but yet seems distant, withdrawn, bad-tempered and angry behind closed doors. Because they are so nice to everybody externally and only unpleasant to their targets, it, believe, it feeds into the belief further that maybe something is wrong with you. It also makes it harder to get help and support as extended family and friends and colleagues may find it hard to believe that this toxic person is toxic and that they are mistreating you. Unfortunately, even if a woman does even go to a therapist to try and resolve a situation with her partner, He may end up acting perfectly polite and charming and normal to the therapist so that the therapist, if she's unaware of how toxic people operate, think that the therapist doesn't think that there are any issues. So then again, the blame lands on your lap and you are blamed for being just too sensitive and or irrational and or unreasonable. This is why it's so important to be careful about who you speak to about toxic people and emotional abusers. I'll explain in more detail how you can seek help, but clearly you only speak to people who understand how these other people operate. Make sure the people you speak to understand the coercive, manipulative nature and that they have your back and that they wouldn't relay any information to the abuser or toxic person or anyone else connected to him. Be careful of people that try and make excuses for this toxic person as well as there is zero excuse for any form of abuse. Also, no matter if your partner has had a troubled past or had a relative die when he was young or had a bad day at work, there is zero excuse for any form of abuse. Most importantly though, you need to trust your instincts above all else. This may be hard when toxic people try to gaslight you and make you feel confused, but trust your gut instincts over anything anyone says or does. 
you have over 100 million neurons lining your intestinal tract. They are constantly speaking to you, so make sure you listen to them. Toxic people enjoy the pain they cause and may be cunning and tell you what they want to hear at that moment in time, in an argument or in a debate. Yet their actions do not match their words, which is referred to as cognitive dissonance. And this is further evidence of their true intentions and personality. Pay attention to the toxic person's actions. This is worth repeating. Pay attention to the toxic person's actions and not their words. That age old saying, actions speak louder than words, rings very true for you right now if you feel that you've been affected by emotional mistreatment. You do not deserve to suffer. You do not deserve to be treated poorly. You deserve to be treated well and with respect. You deserve to feel safe and secure and relaxed in your own home. There is zero excuse for any form of abuse. If you feel you might be subject to any form of abuse, physical, sexual, emotional, uh, verbal, religious, digital, it is important to remember there is no excuse for any form of abuse or emotional mistreatment. It may be hard to initially accept that you have any toxic person in your life at all, but they do exist and reside in many echelons of society and may even be your boyfriend, your partner, your husband, in your family or friends or work colleagues in your place of work. If you have recognised that you have experienced this or any form of mistreatment, make sure to start documenting each time it happens and put pen to paper, especially if you find yourself crying a lot. Also journal about your feelings and emotions and outrage at the mistreatment and remember that it's not your fault but you have the power to change the course of your life one small step at a time. From my own personal experience, I would suggest starting to write everything down, everything that they say or do onto a journal or onto paper, or put it into a secure passworded app on your mobile phone. Indeed, for some women, it may also be useful to start to record your partner's mistreatment so it's clear in your head what is going on so that you do not forget. And by listening to a ver- uh, an audio recording, you really get to hear what has been said and it's, not, and it's then not distorted. Learning about your self-worth and appropriate personal and psychological protection is essential. But sadly, it is not taught or discussed much in society for women. But it is essential for healthy relationships, a healthy body and as a deterrent to toxic people. Make your next step to start to journal and start to take back power and control slowly, one step at a time. Your health, your physical, emotional and spiritual health depend upon this. I appreciate I've covered a lot today as I feel that this is a hugely important subject that personally took me a very long time to recognise and accept. I do hope that by sharing some of my own learning that this starts to help you expand your own awareness of your value and worth and that no one should treat you poorly no matter who they are. I believe the secret to life is balance. I believe the secret to balance is awareness and I believe the secret to awareness is through journaling and meditation and they will set you free and help expand your mind as to what is going on inside your body and your emotions. If you feel you're related to any of the above that's been mentioned, then check out some of the domestic abuse helplines online and start to read the array of books on Amazon and read as much as you can. Next week, I'll explain more and also what steps you can take to protect yourself properly and learn to put in the appropriate safe boundaries to slowly and carefully extract yourself from the emotional mistreatment and ensure that an abuser in future leaves you alone and also how you can attract a healthy, respectful and loving partner who embraces you as you are, loves you and builds you up as you should. Until then, to your health.
Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.